Hey, this is Raul of Please Act Right. Today, we're going to talk about prenuptial agreement. Now, I know it's a lot of y'all out there saying, just don't get married, you never have to worry about it. And I feel the same way. But you got to know that as long as life keeps going on, there are going to be guys out there who are going to want to get married. So even if you don't want to get married, check out this video to see what this lawyer right here is going to talk about as far as getting an ironclad prenup. Because you never know, you may have a son or a nephew or an uncle or somebody who wants to get married. Make sure you send them a link to this video so they know what to do. So this particular video, I don't have to interrupt. I'm just going to let them go ahead and tell you the four things that's needed to have an ironclad prenuptial agreement. Take a listen. So the only advice I could give you would be, you know, speaking to what MTR talks of in terms of the exit strategy, how to get out. Your number one, really your best, and you know, let's just be honest, maybe your only uh, source of protection, which is good enough to be honest, is a prenup. You absolutely need a prenup. Prenups work. Now, what's a prenup? A prenup basically is just a contract, guys. It's just a contract that your attorney should draw up. And if I could just speak to you for three or four minutes, I can tell you how to get an ironclad prenup. You only need four things. It's, it's not like you need a bullet point 17, uh, 17 point list of, of how to get a bullet point, a bulletproof prenup. It's not true. You only need four things. And I'm going to assume you're in the United States. Uh, or I'm going to assume that. Uh, what's the first thing you need? You need an attorney. You really, really need an attorney to draft your prenup. Some of you guys will cheap it out, of course, you know how we can be, and you will try to draft your own prenup. Uh, it'll, it'll probably get thrown out. I don't know what to tell you. Now you'll hear in the Red Pill community that prenups get thrown out all the time. Now that's not true, but do prenups get thrown out? Have there been prenups thrown out? Absolutely. But you can't stop there. You gotta ask why. That's the one question. Whenever you hear anybody in the Red Pill community say prenups get thrown out, just ask them, just say, okay, why? They won't be able to answer, All right? Like, oh, you know, judges don't like them, that's BS. The reason they get thrown out depends on the individual prenup. So uh, Steven Spielberg's prenup got thrown out, right? And he had to pay millions of dollars. People in the Red Book community, oh, well, look at Steven Spielberg. Why did his prenup get thrown out? That's what you gotta ask, right? Remember, you gotta ask why? Oh, well, because he wrote it himself on a napkin. That's right. Your boy Steven Spielberg, he wrote his own prenup on a damn napkin. How is it not going to get thrown out? Our prenups are 20 pages, right? So like get your prenup drafted by an attorney and a prenup is a contract. That's like you trying to remove your own spleen and you're a mechanic. A great ironclad prenup can cost you 2,500, three grand. Three grand is nothing in a divorce, guys. It's nothing to pay 30 grand in the divorce. So just pay 10% and you don't have to worry about paying the 90%. Now, if you want the gold standard, get your prenup drafted by two attorneys, one attorney that represents you and then another attorney to represent your spouse. Why? Because if, if I get married and then uh, my, let's say Michelle, Michelle is my, uh, my, my, wife and then she divorces me what is she going to say she's oh well the lead attorney had an attorney and his attorney drew up the prenup and then he just gave it to me but you know uh, i've only got a high school education and i didn't read it. i got some college an associate's degree and i couldn't i didn't really read it and i didn't understand it and it was all these legal terms and all these legalese <laughs> shout out to hex gp i was going to make that joke but i just let it slide um I, uh, I didn't understand it. So there are some judges that'll be like, hey, the balance of power was too unfair. The lead attorney is an attorney. The lead attorney had an attorney. And uh, Lord Michelle did it, did it, uh, didn't have an attorney. So because of the balance of power, I'm gonna throw it out. But if, if Lauren had gotten her own prenup, her own attorney, what would that attorney have done? The attorney would have negotiated with my attorney so it would the, the 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 contents of the prenup would have her interests represented in it. Then Lauren's attorney would have read the prenup to her, page by page, paragraph by paragraph, clause by clause. How does that help you? Well, now Lauren can't come back and say, "Oh, I never read it." Your attorney read it to you. Hmm. Oh, I didn't understand it. Your attorney explained it to you. Now she doesn't have a leg to stand on. Right. So at least get one attorney to draft your prenup. But, you know, get two. That's the gold standard. 
Uh, attorneys are not going to put in the BS that you guys try to put in that gets your prenups tossed out, right? Some of you guys will say, oh, well, my friend's prenup got thrown out but you won't ask why. But if you asked why, what would he say? Oh, well, because I wrote it myself and I put in there that, you know, if she cheats on me, then I get custody of the kids. No judge on earth is gonna grant that. You can't, there's no title to kids. You guys will put in there, <laughs> oh, you know, my wife can never weigh over 160 pounds. Now she's 180, so she doesn't get anything. Yeah, yeah, listen, MTR. I can't put that one in there. <laughs> put it in there. God damn God. it. <laughs> God, what do you mean? Yes. Well, what goes in there, right? <laughs> Can you put anything in there? <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly right. So get an attorney knows what you can put in there and what you can't. So get one attorney and the gold standard is to get two attorneys. What's the second thing? Guys, even if you have, let's say, let's say you opt for the one attorney. Let's say you opt for me, the lead attorney, and I draft a 20 page prenup and I give it to you, right? And I tell you what to do with it, but you don't listen. So you don't give it, you don't, you don't give it to her to sign. You kind of sit there and wait on it. Now, guess what? Now it's the wedding day. Listen, sign this, sign this 20 page document right quick. And she's standing there, she lifts it up her veil like, what, what? Sign it right quick. What is it? It's the prenup. What do you mean a prenup? The pastor's right here, just sign it right quick. She's like, I can't sign this. And what do you say? You say, oh, okay. Well, if you don't sign it, the wedding's off. You try to put pressure on them. Well, guess what's gonna happen? She's gonna be there, she's gonna be crying the mascara and she's gonna sign your damn 20 page prenup. But watch what happens in seven years. Watch what happens in seven years when she gets it thrown out. And then you're gonna lose half your stuff and you're gonna be crying to the Red Pill community talking about prenups don't work. No, I drafted an ironclad prenup. I explained it. What did I tell you to do with it? I told you to give it to her six months before your wedding. Six months before your wedding, give it to her. That way, if you see in three months she hasn't signed it, you don't have to go through the rigmarole of putting down more money and outlays. You already know what the deal is, but you didn't do that. You were scared of your woman. So many of you are scared of your own women. And you don't want to ask her straight away about the prenup. You kind of want to force her into it. Well, the judge is going to see that. He can absolutely throw it out and it'll be your fault because I drafted you an excellent prenup and you ruined it because you were too scared to give it to her when she had time to think about it, when she had time to give it reviewed. So that's the, that's the second thing, guys. The gold standard, give it to her six months before the wedding. Now, there might be someone in the chat who's going to get married in four months and you say, oh, well, lead attorney, is it too late? No, 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 no. Get on it. Right? For, I'm just telling you, the closer it gets to the wedding date, the more likely it is to get thrown out. If you can get her to sign in four months, you're still good. But you know, if you start pressing her, pressing her with, you know, are we, we already put down the deposit on this, we're gonna lose the deposit on that. Your parents already paid for the Delta airline tickets into Hartsville, Jackson. Once finances start becoming a, a decision-making consideration, you're screwed. You're screwed, right? So do not allow her to say, I signed this under duress. Give it to her at least six months before the wedding gold standard. Third, some of you guys, man, you're sneaky. Talk you're sneaky. To LA. Talk listen, to listen, listen, listen. <laughs> in, in, a, in a prenup, you have to list out all of your assets. Some of you are gonna put your bank account and you're gonna, oh, you're gonna leave out your savings. You're going to leave out your savings account. Some of you are going to put down your, your checking and your savings, but you're going to fail to mention that retirement thing you got, your little 401k. Some of you got some Bitcoin. Some of you guys, have are you leaving out your Ethereum? You think your, your wife doesn't know anything about that wallet? Well, if you leave something out of your financial disclosure, uh, your oh, Malcolm's breaking it down. Don't even talk about the offshore accounts, right? <laughs> that, that Gulf Shore trust that, that everybody's trying to pile money into. He's exactly right. If you find, put all your money in that account, that offshore account, put all that money in that, in that blind hidden trust. If it ever comes out, your wife can reopen the divorce and get all of it. Not just half, get all of it. The judge can punish you for lying. Absolutely a judge will throw your your prenup out for fraud right you were lying you said that these were all of your assets and they weren't so guys and and like this and the last one kind of go hand in hand 
What's the last one? Now, this is kind of where it gets a little squishy, right? But you kind of got to be fair. Some of you guys, you'll want to get married and you're right in there. Okay, well, if we're married 20 years and you divorce me, you leave with $17. You're asking for the judge to be like, okay, you're trying to punish her. You're being punitive. I'm going to throw it out. $17 after 20 years, right? Now, here's the thing. Is it bad that you want to give your wife $17 after 20, 20 years of marriage if she divorces you? Is that bad? That's not bad. The bad part is you deciding to marry her. It's There's no problem with you only wanting to give a specific woman $17 after 20 years of marriage. That is just a mere reflection on how you feel about this person. You might not like her enough to want to take care of her or to give her half. You don't like her that much. You're kind of looking at her and you've seen some things while y'all were dating. You've seen some things where y'all were engaged where you think, well, if she divorces me after 20 years, she only deserves $17. Fair enough. Stay with her for 20 years. Just don't marry her. Guys, you don't have to get married. Like no one's forcing you to get married. But if you try to have your cake and eat it too, if you try to marry this woman and then at the same time try to punish her by giving her $17, the judge is gonna call you out on it. And the judge can absolutely throw your, throw your prenup out, right? So not to get too deep into three prenups, but there's only four things, guys. Listen, get it drafted at least by one attorney. Gold standard is two, all right? Get it drafted by someone competent, reviewed by someone competent. Don't spring it on your wife. Give it to her six months before the wedding. Number three, disclose everything. Disclose the savings account. Disclose the pension. Disclose the Ethereum, right? And then number four, just be somewhat fair, guys. Just be somewhat fair. If you can do that, you will have an ironclad prenup that will hold up every single time. And there you have it, the four things you need for a prenuptial agreement to be ironclad. Shouts out to MTR for that video. I put the link to the full video in my description box below. I kind of chopped it down a little bit. It's about 18 minutes long. So if you know anybody that's thinking about getting married anytime soon, make sure you send them this link so they can check it out, so they know how to protect themselves and their assets. Remember fellas, protect yourselves at all times. Hey, somebody had to tell you, and I love you, so it might as well be me. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when I post a new video. I post a new video every week. And in the meantime, get a prenup if you're going to get married. My name is Raul. See you in another video. So if you enjoyed this video, check out one of these two videos right here. I'm sure you'll enjoy them too. And if you like, you can visit my channel. I have plenty of videos there. Go ahead. Don't be scared.